Welcome to the Art of Procurement, the official podcast of the Catalyst Co community. And our purpose is to enhance the impact of procurement by elevating the discussion one conversation at a time. Here at Art of Procurement, Catalysts come together every single week to share their challenges, ideas, successes, and perspectives on the business of procurement. Hi there, I'm Philip Eidson and thank you for tuning in to the Art of Procurement today. If you're a regular listener, you'll know that we typically publish an interview every Monday. But this month, we're celebrating Take Action October. So for October only, we're publishing a five-minute daily micropod to help you take action to elevate the influence and the impact of both yourself and your team. If you're joining us midway through this series, listen to episode 204. That will give you more details on Take Action October and the daily five-minute podcast. I also explain the concept of a vehicle in that episode, which in my experience is the single most important factor that determines your ability to translate learnings into action. So in today's Take Action podcast, I'm going to share a clip from my conversation with Susan Grelling. Susan is Vice President of Supply Chain, Sourcing, Planning and Transportation, at Patterson Companies, and previously, she's also enjoyed roles as a Chief Risk Officer. When this clip, Susan and I were discussing the importance of building optionality into your sourcing, contracting, and category strategies. When it's a period of fluctuation, you have no clue when the next shock to the system is. No clue. Um, and to be ready for that. So I think the thing I learned was to have options ready I, you know, I think A is going to happen. I'm well prepared for A. What is the one thing I could not imagine happening, which is hard, right? Or let's say simply the antithesis of what I think is going to happen happens. What happens to my positioning and portfolio? Unknown unknowns are, are, are those that will create winners and losers. Um, and the only thing I know is, you go, look, I don't know what's going to happen, but let's say this decision that I just made is the worst decision in the next environment. So everything I spent, everything I did is totally mispositioned. Okay? How do I reverse it? Am I in long-term contracts I can't reverse? Have I, am I taking possession of inventory I can't return? Because these things will lower your costs, right? But maybe by being at the high cost end in turmoil, I can return it. I don't have to speak for it. I can double my, my order with 30 days notice, but I can't half my order. So the only thing I test for is if whatever I just put in type paper is the worst decision that could have been made. For, and you don't really have to know why. You just say, let's say it's the worst thing. What, can I, what optionality can I build into my decision to mitigate that impact? Hi there, it's Phil here again. So when I train procurement professionals on supply chain and supplier risk, I always talk about business continuity plans. However, while I do cover them in the traditional sense, I want to share with you the idea of a category or subcategory level business continuity plan. So a business continuity plan at the category or subcategory level takes a much more holistic approach to considering risk, to identifying potential risks, also to developing mitigation plans. And in fact, as Susan and I actually talked about later in this interview that I took the clip from, turning risks into opportunity when you're able to factor in optionality helps you respond faster than your competition. And in fact, as Susan and I talked about later in this interview, turning risks into an opportunity when you're actually able to factor in optionality to respond faster than your competition to a particular issue. And so my action item today is this. Take a subcategory or a sourcing project that you're responsible for. Take a step back, sketch out what could go wrong, be it externally or internally in terms of projected volumes, as an example. In doing so, you can start to think about what kind of optionality you may want to build into your contracts. In the example of a sourcing project or into how you are balancing different suppliers, locations, contracts at a subcategory or a category level. Having that optionality really helps you then become flexible to take advantage of an opportunity or when responding to a risk.
Thanks for joining me for this special Take Action October podcast from the Art of Procurement. You can check out today's question by going to artofprocurement.com slash takeaction2018. If the idea of taking small actions on a regular basis is something that resonates with you, I'd love for you to check out the details of our Procurement Capability Development Program, the Catalisco Platform. The Catalisco platform translates dots into lines. So taking individual pieces of learning, insight, validation, and inspiration, and connecting them to coordinated strategies and actions, that's really important, that elevate your influence and your impact. The Catalisco platform helps procurement professionals all around the world become truly trusted advisors. So if that's something that you would like to check out, visit artofprocurement.com slash TCP. That's artofprocurement.com slash TCP. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another Take Action October daily podcast.